Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Severe weather threat uh, continues for Sunday, and uh, the threat actually looks like it could be increasing even more over what it was yesterday. So I want to quickly go through um, uh, some of these uh, uh, some things and uh, show you guys uh, sort of the latest. I want to start out with future radar tonight and just kind of jump right into it. Give you a little bit of the timing and then we'll take a look at some of the reasons why this uh, could be such a bad event for us. So we'll start out here on Friday evening where we're at now and uh, we'll put future radar here into motion. This is the high resolution NAM that I show oftentimes. Here we come overnight on Saturday. Here we start off the morning. Here's 9 a.m. on tomorrow morning, and you notice not a whole lot around, maybe just a few showers, and I think we stay mostly dry throughout the day. It's, it's possible later in the evening we get a, an isolated shower or two, but for the most part, I think we stay dry. I've only went with, I think, a 20% chance on, uh, on Saturday, but that chance will certainly increase as Sunday goes in. By the time you get to uh, midnight uh, on Saturday night into Sunday morning, you notice we got another we got a first wave of of energy coming through and this won't be severe there won't be anything to worry about that um, but by the time we go through the morning it's gone and I, then I think we start to dry out for a little bit here you are at seven o'clock in the morning maybe just a few scattered things around there by that morning but that'll change as we go throughout the day you notice by 10 o'clock pretty much clear and I think that's uh, that's about right I think we stay dry a lot of the day on Sunday and that we may even see a few uh, peaks of sunshine some breaks in the clouds which will only help to destabilize the atmosphere further by the time you go to one o'clock you notice this is something that could be of a concern to us you start to see uh, a few individual cells pop up ahead of a main line that you're going to see develop here here by the time I move it to the next frame and uh, let me just show you that next frame and in, in, in the course of uh, this future radar from 1 to 4 o'clock you see this line just absolutely explode over us and uh, I believe when this line does develop that it's going to go severe very 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 quickly and this line will move through very fast as well I mean here we are at 4 o'clock by the time 7 o'clock comes the lines already through us according to this and then by the time 10 o'clock that night comes it's almost all the way through Kentucky and it's and it's well out of our region. So you can see this is going to be a very fast moving line of storms. You know, some of the squall lines that we've had recently have not moved very fast. Uh, you know, sometimes you would see them initiate in, in Illinois and they would start to kind of move in, in more of this direction and it would take several hours to get here. That is not going to be the case Sunday. Uh, this is going to be a very fast moving setup. And of particular concern to me are these little cells that will come out ahead of this main squall line that's going to develop. So uh, really, um, the squall line, as you notice, starts to develop right around in here, around somewhere between 1 and 4 o'clock. But again, it's these individual cells that we start to see on radar out ahead of it that I think could be a big problem for us and actually bring us potentially two rounds of severe weather. I do believe the line will be severe, but I think some of these individual cells could be severe as well because what these could be are uh, supercells and the environment that uh, we have on Sunday is certainly supportive of supercells, uh, which, would, which would not be good. The setup for this, as I've said, is very similar to the Halloween setup where the upper level wind dynamics are just uh, absolutely impressive but the thing that we have on this that concerns me more than what I was with the Halloween one is that we actually have the instability there to be able to fuel some of these storms as well so let me just go down here and, and go through some of the model parameters uh, with you what you're looking at here is uh, convective available potential energy CAPE, as you've heard me call it before, it, it is a measure of that instability. And then I've labeled and I have uh, placed on here the uh, isobars, which are the wind lines. So if we just kind of zoom out and we get a situation, a handle on where we're at, what you have is a very powerful and, and strong uh, deepening low pressure system up here. And then from there, you have a cold front that's situated very similar in a fashion like this and this cold front is going to be a very powerful cold front and that will sweep through our area uh, pretty daggone quickly in the whole scheme of things and so the cold front as you notice is is out here just to our west and this is for uh, four o'clock in the afternoon remember four o'clock in the afternoon on the radar that i just showed you is actually 
uh, when that line would be starting to set up. So if I just throw reflectivity on here, it's not as colorful as the other radar I showed you, but it still gives you the idea. Uh, it's just it's just the way the color variations are, but it's the same line. You notice that line line is is pretty much alongside of where the cold front is. So. Um, this will be a, a cold front driven system. Again, we may have a few uh, potential cells to deal with ahead of this line, but it's going to be this line rolling through that's going to be of the grave concern to us. And you notice this line pretty much follows the cold front as it rolls through. But of initial concern to me as well is if we throw on the cape, uh, you see some very intense, uh, potentially, this is anywhere from in, in this shading here, from 1,000 to 1,500. And, if you look down in here, I don't know if my uh, uh, screen may be, my uh, um, uh, camera may be covering this for you. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, you're looking anywhere from around the Evansville area here, almost 1,400 units of Cape, all the way to, um, if I just kind of zoom in up in here in Martin County, another close to 1,400 units. Bloomington 11. This is anyway, this is just impressive Cape for this time of the year. Uh, it's hard to get this kind of instability this time of year. So whenever we see these numbers, these aren't these are nothing for summer, but this is significant for the fall. And uh, remember that and instability is just warmth and moisture and that an instability essentially is is fuel for these storms. Think of it as throwing kerosene on a fire. What's it going to do when the kerosene goes on the fire? The fire just takes off and absolutely explodes. It's kind of like lighter fluid on your charcoal. You know, that that that's what these that's what cape is to these storms. It's the fuel that makes them uh, have the ability to go severe real fast and uh, and the reason why is because the temperatures if we just take a look at the temperatures I mean, we're talking temperatures in the 70s at this time and it's hard to get temperatures in the 70s this time of year and uh, frankly not get severe weather with it so um, that that's a, a cause of, of great concern to me whenever you see this amount of of cape roll through and uh, you know as you put this into motion uh, the cape will uh, wear off eventually, but that's because the front passes through. So, um, a, 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 in a nutshell, plenty of fuel for these storms to work with. As far as winds are concerned, plenty of winds for these to work with. Here, we're talking, oh, here's your low-level jet. So, we're looking here at wind speeds um, around... Um, 5,000 feet up in the air. And what you notice in our areas is at least a 50 knot wind over at not 5,000 feet off the surface. Very supportive of severe weather. Go up a little bit further into the 500 millibar and you see the winds are really whipping. You're talking a 90 knot, 80 to 90 knot wind in our area at the time. This line would be starting to roll through. And uh, this is about 18,000 feet off the surface. Go up a little bit further, we'll go about 30 to 40,000 feet with a jet stream and you're talking winds of uh, 90, uh, 90 plus knots in our area, even up here in central in Indiana to um, um, 130 knots. And uh, I mean, this is just, these are, this is just frankly, uh, very, very powerful winds. And, and another thing that concerns me, if I just throw on um, the, uh, the uh, mm -hmm, here we go, let's throw on the height lines here uh, for, for where we're at here with the, uh, with the 500 millibar winds and so that we match these up. I want you to notice what you have up here is um, a large area of an upper level low here and then I want you to notice uh, one thing. Notice how the line goes like this down over here the lines start to go like this. Uh, this is what we call divergence and essentially what this is is you've got winds moving this way, you've got winds moving this way, and it sort of creates a vacuum cleaner effect. So as the winds pick up in speed and they go different directions, uh, the winds at the surface are evacuated very quickly and something has got to come up and, and, and fill that void that's left by this fast leaving wind. And so that um, essentially creates rising motion in the atmosphere when we have strong upper level divergence like this. So that's another cause for concern to us. So short, sweet, and to the point about this is all things are pointing to me at this time for a significant severe weather event. Will it be an outbreak? I don't like to use that term loosely. You know that. Um, but I'm very concerned about this event, and I do believe this, this has the potential to be an outbreak. Um, whenever you see signals like this moving over us, I mean, this just, this just reeks of, 
of severe weather to me. And uh, for that reason, the Storm Prediction Center has uh, continued to place us in a slight risk. In fact, if you go the probabilities, we're actually under a 30% risk. I would not be surprised to see this area go even higher at some point. I'm not going to say that it will. Um, probably, um, if, this, if things hold, I would not be surprised to see a moderate risk issued for our area out of this. And um, uh, it probably wouldn't happen until Sunday morning, whenever we're at the day of the event. It could happen tomorrow, but likely Sunday morning before that happens. But I could see us easily getting a 45% risk out of this, if not more, but probably sticking at a 45. Um, this, to me, definitely screams of a moderate risk for severe weather, in my opinion. Two other parameters that really concern me about this, and I'll show these because I want to sort of hone in on the bullseye of, of where we can expect storms. The first one that I want to show you is the SCP. This is the supercell composite parameter, and essentially what this is is tells us are supercells possible with this. And uh, the, what you see is with the shading around in our area, you don't have to understand everything about it, but just understand this is saying, yes, supercells are possible in our area. And so in addition to that line of storms, again, any cell that forms out ahead of that main line is something we're going to have to closely watch and be concerned about. The other thing that I want to show you that I would be concerned about is the STP, the Significant Tornado Parameter. And this looks at uh, significant tornadoes, so EF2 or greater. And really, if you can get a number of 1 or 2 or above especially, uh, you're doing pretty good and, and, and that's... Um, and that's significant where you take notice of it. And what you see is we're above one for the entire region. Uh, the, the first start where the green goes to yellow starts with one. And then notice this sort of a bullseye right over uh, our area. And uh, this bullseye is at least three and above. This particular one is, is five to seven. So um, what does that mean? It means that the, the biggest tornado threat is essentially centered right over southern Indiana. So if I had to uh, take a wild guess as to where the greatest risks are, let me just take these off and uh, zoom in here and just kind of do that analysis. Certainly I think the whole region is at risk for severe weather and so maybe I'll just outline my own severe weather risk and, and absolutely the whole region is at risk for severe weather. No question about that but let's just throw a different color on here. I would say in particular this region right here would be the greatest risk for severe weather and this would be where I would put the moderate risk at this point if it were me. Now they have not issued a moderate risk yet but again I would not be surprised if they did and this is where I think it should be issued based off of the latest data I see. This particular uh, area that we are in is, is the where I believe would be at the most at risk for uh, severe weather and especially uh, tornadic activity. So uh, with all these um, with all this lining up, uh, just expect some very, very, very rough weather on Sunday. Uh, if, you go, if you follow uh, Dr. Greg Forbes on the Weather Channel, uh, if you follow his TORCON index, his Tornado Condition Index, uh, he had it for three earlier today. When these latest data came in that I'm showing you now, he raised it to five. So again, I think we're all in, in the industry getting a little bit concerned about this situation. It's, it's something that's very concerning for us. And if you just go to southernindianaweather.com, and you take a look at the latest. Uh, tomorrow, again, only a very slight chance of rain, but we're looking at a high of about 65. Sunday, though, I've raised my forecast, and I've raised it up to 71 for high temperature. I do believe we hit the 70s, and uh, you don't see 70s in mid to late November without severe weather. That's just kind of a general rule of thumb. It is very hard to do that. And even if we don't get, even even before the severe weather, I want to say that if we don't, because I believe we were, I believe we're going to get it. But uh, even before that, just take a look at the winds and how gusty they're going to be. You're talking 10 to 15 miles per hour, maybe even 20 mile per hour sustained winds all day long. It's going to be very windy, gusting up to 30. So, uh, you know, all it takes is a little instability for a storm to go severe, and you're tapping into 50 and 60 knot winds and more up above. And you can get, really, with these 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts with some of these storms very easily. A few tornadoes would be possible with this. Uh, you could potentially have a hail risk. And you, you would have a flooding risk as well because of, of the gulf moisture that's going to be pumped in. So really it's the whole package deal. And uh, of course you see it's a strong cold front because you go from 70s to 50s. So in one day you get about a 20 degree temperature difference. So it's something that we will keep an eye on. Again, uh, we'll have more updates to come on Saturday and on Sunday as well. I'll be here to cover it through the event. And uh, 
uh, just have your plan in place, have your NOAA weather radio handy, and uh, just let's be thankful that this is during the daytime so we can see anything that rolls through. More updates to come, folks. For Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Feel free to ask any questions you have. Have a great night, folks.